We are, of course, from the Hub Crate session. Just a, a quick uh, harvest update. I don't know if we still have yes, Lisa we have with Lisa us. Here. We do. Uh, thank you. So we're going to uh, give uh, Lisa the word first, just to uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the session you hosted. Hi, everyone. Um, Okay, first thanks to SOCAP because it, uh, it really sort of gave a, a platform and an opportunity to keep the dialogue going. Um, and I had this idea because I, I sort of saw on the agenda there was one thing that was missing a little bit, yeah? And it was a little bit more on inclusion and diversity, yeah? And where were the investors on inclusion and diversity? So I thought, okay, let's have a little dialogue about it. Yeah. So under the title, How to Attract Funding for Inclusion Projects and Scale Them, we entered a wonderful dialogue. And first, thanks to those uh, that entered in that dialogue with, uh, with me. One was Veronica. Another one was Amir, who I, I like to call our little skeptical investor, who helped us along tremendously in our dialogue. We also had uh, two other uh, um, social entrepreneurs and somebody from the British Council who also funds project. Uh, and I think that the first thing that we discovered was that uh, we social entrepreneurs, uh, especially in the inclusion and diversity field, need to understand how investors talk, yeah? We need to understand the lingo. We also need to figure out what is it we really want, yeah? Is it a fund, is it a grant, or is it a loan, yeah? Uh, but we also need to start thinking from the start, when we make our projects, how to make them commercial, yeah? Because that's what's going to attract an impact investor, yeah? It's gotta be something that's replicable, scalable, and sellable. Most importantly, I think we also realize that uh, we also have to sort of quantify what we're doing. Yeah, uh, when we're talking inclusion uh, and uh, and diversity, um, for for me, it's a reality. You know, th th there's one fact uh, in the future that is that the world in the Nordics will be tremendously multicultural. In fact, they're saying in 2040, 56 percent of the population in Oslo will not be Norwegian. Okay, but then as we're doing all these projects, we need to think, okay, if I have a great project that is including immigrants, what is the benefit, yeah? What does that mean? What is the social system saving from that, yeah? And that will talk to investors. Uh, some other thing. Yes, and now they want me to, to wrap it up and, and be concrete because not only that, I got to catch a plane. Uh, we decided uh, we got to have new solutions. We got to start doing projects, but we also decided uh, we need to have a conference of our own, yeah? So we decided in November, uh, not October, but in November, we will have a conference uh, that will be focused on, uh, now everyone's looking at me, <laughs> suddenly I can't remember the title, Impact Investing for Diversity and Inclusion in the Nordics. Yeah? Well, we will use the opportunity to educate you impact investors on how important it is not only to invest in Africa, but also to invest in your own countries. Because if we're not including <laughs> We're excluding. So thank you. And thank you so much for having the chance to attend SOCAP. And on that note, I thank you. And thank you for sharing with us, Lisa. Have a good fly. Yeah, that was a great uh, session, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, one of the images that we talked about, which is nice when you work with this, is that we, when, with the intensity of the discussion, where, where the dialogue was here, which is good, where you're kind of when we tried to break out the... the After an hour, you know, we couldn't break out from this session. People wanted to start talking, finding new solutions, go into action. So this is just an example of uh, what happens. We had 12 to 14 really, really great topics and sessions. And, uh, well, I think it was a success. I really enjoyed being there, just uh, sort of hearing in from the different uh, discussions that was going on. And when everyone, like Lisa said, stepping in from different perspectives and sharing around these topics and also creating new solutions. So it's, it was really good energy. And also it's interesting to see because there were some sessions, there were, were a few participants. Uh, mostly they were full before we even got started. I had to ring the bell and say you're invited to do what you already do. But also with, few, with just a few participants, they came out with long lists of action points. So that it's true that whoever is supposed to come is the right people. And I want to say it again, we're continuing, continuing the conversation on SOCAP Connect. So everything that's been on, ongoing on the discussion will be on SOCAP Connect. 
So I don't know if you have. I want to show you some more uh, oh, graphic. Th this is also images on on what happened, and we we are transforming these into words, and we are also publishing them on SoCap Connect, so all of you can take part of it. So we end this with a short, short. Um, well, you can see how it goes. For everyone that doesn't that hasn't been on the um, Hub Create session, this is how it looked like. I go back. Okay. Back, way back. <laughs> we have Bjorn, who's the go-to guy at this conference. Uh, I'm going to the San Francisco meetup um, so that we can talk about uh, methods for cities to encourage sustainability through frameworks, projects, that sort of thing. And I think the most important part of that is establishing information systems so information can be distributed and gathered very simply and you don't have to uh, look for places to find. I'm going to join one of the tables at the sessions uh, that are going to happen right now. Uh, we have very uh, interesting topics, five of them. So I'm still don't know in which one I'm going to be, but I'm interested in the one about uh, how to make it's over there how to make environmental sustainability a religion. This is a follow-up from last uh, yesterday's session. It's going to be awesome. We will see. And this session we are going to be talking about basically creating a whole movement or call it a religion around environment sustainability uh, to see what it takes for people to actually change their behavior and nudge them over into the sustainable lifestyle. Uh, which isn't happening right now. Uh, there's a lot of well-intentioned people, but for whatever reason, they're not transitioning. Um, what interests me about this topic is what's beyond sustainability. So maybe there's some spark in there that can actually draw people in. No, I just came out of this fantastic session. We had the open space session here at the Pop-Up Hub. First of all, we had a full table there, which you know could have been just the two of us sitting there, but it was a full table, it was high energy. People really contributed a lot of content, but also excitement. So I, I, I don't see that usually in, in, in kind of workshop settings where people can sit back and just relax. And here, really, everybody jumped into it and was kind of endorsed to also jump into it. So this was our session there. It was great fun. It was actually, for me, the best session so far. Uh, at the conference and I look forward to have, have more open spaces and other workshops like this. I mean we had quite low kind of expectation in a sense, no idea if it's going to work and it just went over the top so really great stuff. So again, thank you very much Soka for letting us be here yes, and uh, creating this you. Hub Crate session. And thank you for all the Hub founders that came from all over the world to join in and being part of recording and hosting this. See you in San Francisco maybe. <laughs>